Namaste everyone. Today I'm going to deal about Saturn, talk a little bit about this planet and the importance that it has in our horoscopes. The first thing that we need to understand is in the planets. Primarily in astrology, we use nine of them. The fast moving planets, Mercury, Venus, Moon, shape the mental tendency and characteristics of the native is what I have found out. And the other planets which are slower, Sun, Mars, Saturn, Jupiter, Rahu, Ketu, though they also deal with the mental tendency and the emotional, psychological makeup of the native, but more than that, they are more in charge of the real life events which is going to happen in the life of the native and how those events shape the future. One of the most important planets, Saturn, which is the planet for justice, is much dreaded. People think that Saturn is always bad. This is not true. What I have particularly found is that the level of maleficence created by Mercury, Moon and other planets are more as compared to the planets such as Mars or Saturn, which we generally are afraid of. Before talking about Saturn, you should know one thing. In the third house, sixth house and eleventh house, malefics are good, so is Saturn. So if you have Saturn in these houses, you don't have to worry. Saturn will not be creating issues. Another point is Saturn is specifically good in his own sign of Capricorn, his moon of Tricona sign of Aquarius and his exaltation sign of Libra. So if you have Saturn in these signs anywhere, then also you should not worry about, worry much about Saturn. Specifically in the sign of Jupiter, Pisces and Sagittarius, also in uh, Cancer as well, Saturn is taken to give Raja Yoga, which gives you worldly comforts and success. In that scenario also, Saturn is very, very good. The most important thing that we should understand that in Nadi astrology, which deals largely about the significations of the planets, Saturn is taken as karma karak or the karmas we are going to do in this life. Saturn being the karaka for misery and Saturn being the karaka for a lot of many other important things, specifically being the child of the sun god, is very essential. The influence of planets over Saturn should be specifically seen, the Rashi lord of Saturn, the Navamsha lord of Saturn, the house where Saturn is situated in the significator of that house, planets in conjunction with Saturn and planets in Aspect with Saturn have a very important say, or rather say very important control in the life of the native. For a particular example, say Saturn is situated in the fourth house. The significator of the fourth house becomes moon. Now, depending on the position of moon, depending on the condition of moon and depending on the house placement of moon, we should judge whether the person will be successful or not. This is very important. Any area of life, though it is controlled by one planet, but every planet has a same on it. Specifically in the matters of success, Saturn is very, very important. In the chart of successful people, you will see whichever house Saturn is situated in the significator karak of that house will be well placed also. This leads the native to success. The karak for the first house is Sun, second house Jupiter, third house Mars, fourth house Moon, fifth house Jupiter again, sixth house Mars again, seventh house Venus, eighth house Saturn himself, ninth house Jupiter. 10th house Mercury, 11th house Jupiter again, and 12th house Saturn. Another specific point is the Lord of the Rashi where Saturn is situated in. Whichever, you check the Lord of the Rashi of Saturn. 
whichever house the planet is situated in whichever house the planet lords basically all the yogas the planet makes and all the things that the planet signify by making different yogas being placed in different signs by being lord of different houses those areas are very prominent in the life of the individual the major achievements and the major miseries all come from that house only the major activity simple words the major activity comes from that house only and as i am talking this many horoscope of clients and students etc is just you know flowing in my head regarding the brilliancy of this particular technique that i am just talking about so say someone is having uh, venus in the fifth house in the sign of uh, say libra and this venus is situated in the ninth house and because libra is falling in the fifth house taurus will fall in the 12th house the matters related to the 12th house the matters related to the fifth house and the matters related to the ninth house will be most prominent in life these are the areas which will give him the maximum misery and when the person works well when there are other rajyogas in the horoscope if the person is able to understand his motive and make proper use of astrology these are the areas which will support it right so this should very essentially be noted specifically there is one more point regarding saturn that i will want to discuss about and in this video series i am fleetingly taking any uh, you know when you tell me the name of a planet what comes to my mind first i am fleetingly talking about these things especially related to mars and saturn you should remember one thing that if saturn and mars are two houses away from each other either way Mars in the twelfth house from Saturn, eleventh house from Saturn, second house from Saturn, third house from Saturn, or Mars with Saturn. In that scenario, person is you know person is person is not having any patience at all. This indicates a lack of patience, and this indicates someone who is very hurry, who is you know who who is you know always eager to do anything. Don't take proper time to think. Don't take proper time to analyze the situations. and take decisions and do things uh, in a very hurried up manner which in turns become the major issue in their life major issue for multiple problems in their life this is something which should be specifically avoided another basic point is mars connected to saturn people generally think that this is a combination for accidents etc see this is not very true the connection of mars and saturn will be there for long for around 84 days in this particular scenario though it may give accidents but accidents should actually be seen through the sixth house and the connections the sixth lord is involving in specifically speaking of saturn and mars connection what you will generally see that people having a saturn mars connection have something to do with engineering either in their education or in their profession another thing is saturn mars combination when both of them are well placed in rashi navamsha and getting adequate strength in that particular scenario this is the combination which makes person quite successful as well okay the most <coughs> dreaded part and you know this is something that i should specifically talk about saturn connected to rahu or saturn connected to ketu is a very special combination that jaimini also talks about saturn connected to rahu or saturn connected to ketu anywhere between the first house to the seventh house jaimini says one will not be able to go to the funeral of his mother whereas the connection between ketu and saturn between the 8th 7th house to the 12th house uh, gemini says that person will not be able to go to the funeral of his father this may or may not come true depending on other significations to the particular combination and the situation of the fourth lord and eighth lord however this particular combination indicates that in the family 
some ancestors after their death were not given much respect and the duties of children towards their elders have been neglected to a great extent which is further leading to problem based on the rashi navamsha and different different planets connecting to this particular combination one should decide out the particular remedy that needs to be done and should do it this is very important otherwise there are problems related to lineage which creates problem in getting married producing children living a happy life earning a decent amount of money or meeting the expenses so this is something that should specifically be uh, kept into consideration while looking into the combinations of saturn and should be judged very seriously especially regarding the connection between saturn and rahu what we have to understand is they are having almost the same traits sages declare shanivadra rahu prajapati ketu rahu is like saturn only so when rahu is in a connection with saturn in that particular scenario what happens the traits of saturn are highly aggregated or say strongly present in the horse what happens in that particular scenario either the person is completely lazy or very hard working either the person is completely feels like down trodden or is extremely egoistic right so with this particular saturn rahu connection the extremes are to be avoided specifically this saturn rahu and saturn ketu combination is also known as treta yoga asama sometimes it also indicates person getting influenced by or negatively affected by bad spirits etc whether you believe it or not this doesn't change the truth right so it results into unnecessary obstacles in life unnecessary issues in life and other such problems right not uh, disposing the you know not doing your duties towards your ancestors is the major issue which leads to many other problems which i have just talked about along with this getting prone to evil eye getting affected by negativity of people around you etc all these things are also signified by this saturn rahu or saturn ketu combination which have to be properly judged and remedied right the relationship with saturn and ketu is good saturn ketu and saturn rahu combination both produces highly successful people saturn rahu combination person can be highly successful the only issue is they are completely into one sort of thinking right so there is no balance in their life as i told you right as they extremely workaholic or not wishing to do anything they need to have control more than control they need to have balance whereas on the other hand saturn ketu combination is a combination where the person is highly capable but not adequately motivated in this particular scenario if the person motivates himself if the lagna is in a good condition if the fifth house is in a good condition saturn ketu combination can give you quite great success in the chart of many successful people you will see saturn get saturn ketu getting connected in rashi or navamsha because these people are highly capable the only thing is motivation and guidance they may be missing and when they find it at the right time they are able to excel like anything they are able to surpass every difficulty and be one of the top achievers in the society this is without any doubt another very important thing is the saturn and its connection with moon okay this leads to sanyas yoga sanyas yoga is a yoga for asceticism this should necessarily be checked why because first of all it gives much spiritual fervor to the native much spiritual advantages to the native and such people should be properly guided to take spirituality seriously regarding the matters of the world as it happens with spiritual people they struggle they struggle in getting married finding a stable job finding a partner and you know why what is the prime purpose of astrology to tell you 
what you are in reality and to tell you the things which are coming in the way so you can be prepared accordingly and you can do things according to that the saturn getting connected to moon is one of the major sanyas yoga one of the major combinations for asceticism there are three four combinations only saturn connected to moon combination number 1 moon getting connected to saturn anyhow in the horoscope and in the rashi chart sorry in the drikana chart d3 chart or in the navamsha chart d9 chart he is also situated in the either the drikana rashi ruled by saturn or the navamsha rashi ruled by saturn this is second combination third combination the rashi lord of moon is very weak and is connected to saturn in all these three conditions it gives birth to yoga for asceticism in this conduct in this condition person is generally not much interested in mundane activities and in the mundane life have a lot of spiritual fervor and support such people should uh, you know very devotedly take to the spiritual path and try to progress in that area only when they try to be into other areas try to be into mundane life and for mundane things such as earning money getting married producing children they may feel difficulty in their life this should be properly judged and the native should be properly guided otherwise a misled a misleaded individual uh, is is very bad okay another uh, very popular thing that comes is the sun saturn combination sun saturn combination people are much dreaded of it it is something that you should take very easy saturn transiting over sun or sun transiting over saturn is a situation which gives person promotion rise in name fame and status increased income and all these things so financially and professionally this is a very good time same happens with people having a sun saturn connection in the horoscope this connection can be by conjunction by mutual aspect by one plane one being situated in the rashi of the other sun saturn combination is a like very good combination and right? there is nothing to doubt about it sun in the rashi of saturn is quite powerful sun in the rashi of saturn is quite powerful be it capricorn or aquarius this particular combination you should understand it this way sun is the authority and saturn is the downtrodden i always say libra is a sign of democracy sun the king is losing his power and saturn the masses and people are gaining the power it is the sign of democracy so basically sun saturn combination person because sun is authority is a liberal person who don't go well with elders and to say in another words sun saturn combination is a person who is quite unhappy with the already set rules and dogmas of the society and is someone who is there to change it do the proper etiquette changes to the already established rules etc of the society for the betterment of society it is a high potential combination where the person may feel difficulty when they try to follow the normal path when they try to follow the normal rule these are the revolutionary people who will put an end to something which is wrong and establish something like a new world order or new order for doing that particular thing in which ever area they are in making the lives of people better so sun saturn combination when the saturn is adequately powerful or when the combination is positively influenced both situated in their own rashi guru navamsha quite powerful making good yogas in that scenario this person is a trend setter works well for the society and if not for the society then at least for his extended family such people are good and their contributions towards their society and their family is unparalleled so i can basically i will go up to this extent of saying that this is the best person born in a family provided the fact that he 
realizes his potential family member and others will realize it by time that is not an issue but first of all he himself should realize his own potential saturn mars combination uh, i have already discussed much about it the things that i am leaving in between i am just giving you a little bit of clues to understand the particular combinations right not talking about them in detail and i should specifically will want to inform you about a forthcoming course that i am doing that is named mastering the planets which have one separate class of 2 to 2 and a half hour on every planet covering all the aspects related to the planet starting with the significations of the planets and how we use the uh, significations of these planets for making predictions as i am doing in this particular series how to judge the combinations house relation house position rashi position and the combination of planet with other planet the mantra of planet significations of planet and what predictions can be made using the planets as i am doing in this particular series will be taught in this crash course of 11 classes where i have given one class one separate class of 2 to 2 and a half hour per planet with a multitude of examples and a whole lot of techniques which is like unfathomable those techniques like if you sit in a room with 20 30 books on saturn for 24 hours or say one month and the fathomable rule is the rule that if you get all the written content present in the world of saturn and keep on thinking on it for 20 24 Thirty months also. The principles which you even cannot get after doing this com- all this complete exercise is what I call unfathomable technique. And I am very sorry to say that I teach only these techniques in my classes and courses which cannot be easily guessed. And along with this, in this course, I am specifically devoting two special classes: one on the moon horoscope, known as Chandra Kundali. and another on the surya horoscope and the chandra kundali these two horoscopes are very important in north india along with the rashi chart moon horoscope is made but since last 300 years north indian astrologers have forgot how to use the moon kundali sun kundali is also very very important but people don't know the uses of it using these two is horoscopes gives much advantage in horoscope reading suggesting remedies and all everything that is astrology so this is the course which i am going to do by the end of this month by the end of may around 29th may i am going to do this course which is of 12 classes each class around 2 to 2 and a half hours the recordings of the class will also be provided to all the students that recording will be accessible for a lifetime So if you are very serious about learning astrology, and even just even if you are starting with astrology, that's not an issue. You should highly consider joining the course. It is gem of a course, as you must have witnessed in this series with me. Coming back to Saturn, there are few more things that I will want to discuss about it. First of all, Saturn being the significator of profession. planets connected to saturn the rashi lord the navamsha lord the significator of the house where uh, saturn is situated in all of them should be seen very carefully to find the right profession for the natal a planet who is getting connected to saturn in rashi or navamsha either way all the things that i have told and that planet also being considerably powerful and positive in the horoscope one should take the profession related to that planet only if they want success in life and this is very true very true as to say you take horoscope of any successful person and you should know what the success means you take horoscope of any successful person and you will find they are in profession of the planet which is connected to saturn and also well placed in the horoscope 
connected to saturn and then conjoined with saturn as acting saturn rashi lord of saturn bhava lord of saturn the significator of the house where saturn is situated in in either rashi or navamsha saturn the thing is another very important point related to saturn is saturn is the significator of misery now in this scene for every planet and this is what we need to understand see there is a fast food astrology is what my wife loves to call it fast food astrology by tq this connected to this planet leads to this result it is not very worthy astrology is a science where you have to or this is like any other field the level of hard work you do to produce a prediction decides the worth and the quality of it and this is pretty simple in any field any field the same goes with astrology as well this is true in astrology also understand that saturn or any planet for that matter the saturn is the reverse sun is the karaka for authority what do you do with this sun sat sun is connected to a planet you get authority in that area so sun connected with jupiter you have authoritative knowledge sun connected with mercury you have authoritative learnings the authority in the field so this is the first thing that you do with the signification another thing is presence of the signification that depends on the strength of planet sun indicate ego when the sun is powerful ego is more in quantity when the sun is weak ego is less in quantity pride that is pride when the sun is powerful one is more proud when the sun is weak one is not that proud now this strong sun is also afflicted this proud turns into ego this weak sun is also not afflicted then the person is very humble have a good humility much humble this is how you understand the signification this is a gem technique learning astrologers who are learning astrology should take a note of this such principles are taught in classics such principles are taught in parampara and believe me without using these principles you cannot predict in my career of 12 years as an astrologer i have seen many budding astrologers and people making prediction and i can say this with certainty and with experience that if you don't include such principles in your analysis then your analysis is laughable coming to this particular point saturn is the karaka of misery saturn connected to any planet by conjunction or aspect tells you that this particular planet is going to give misery now say this is connected to mars so there will be misery related to mars now one can have misery related to machine one can have misery related to living being brother one can have misery related to other significations of mars now how do you decide that you should try to understand that jupiter and mercury indicate living beings venus sun indicate the experience nature character behavior quality and other planet indicate the non living things i will repeat mercury jupiter indicate living beings so sun venus indicate experiences nature tendency approach etc and other planets that is mars saturn moon they indicate non living things normal things now you see the planet is situated in which rashi 
and which navamsha rashi of which planet navamsha of which planet and there is one more star one rashi has three navam nine navamsha in set of three navamsha number 1 2 3 navamsha number 4 5 6 navamsha number 7 8 9 So planet in zero degree to three degree twenty minute, ten degree to thirteen degree twenty minutes, and twenty degree to twenty three degree twenty minutes goes to the first navamsha, which indicates non living beings. Planet in the second navamsha three twenty to six forty degrees, thirteen twenty to sixteen forty degrees, or twenty three twenty to twenty six forty degree indicates the nature, behavior, character, tendency of the native himself. and of the things which are controlled by god relationship experience and that stuff planet between the 16 degree 40 minute to 10 degree 16 degree 40 minute to 20 degree and 26 degree 40 minutes to the last of the degree indicate living beings now you see saturn meaning connection with moon and based on the above formula of the navamsha division and the rashi occupied by moon in d1 and d9 And based on the lot of that planet being Mercury, Jupiter, set one living being, Venus, Sun, set two being experiences and the aspects of personality, and Moon, Mars, Sun. Sorry, Moon, Mars, uh, Moon, Mars, Saturn, non-living beings tells you misery from what things you are getting. This is also equally applicable when the mutual dasha and the dasha of these planets are running. For example, you say Moon is in the Rashi of Venus at uh, two degrees. Moon is in Taurus two degrees. The dasha of Moon is going on Moon dasha Venus and Taurus dasha Venus dasha Moon and Taurus dasha. Anyhow, dasha dasha and Taurus dasha Venus in dasha and Taurus dasha any other planet. So this moon is in the Venus Rashi between three degrees. This is supposed to indicate non-living beings. In the matter of non-living beings, Venus indicate what? In the matter of non-living beings, Venus will indicate vehicles, flowers, and all this. So allergy through flowers, getting hit by vehicle, investing in a vehicle, investing in a bad vehicle, bad investments in vehicle, accidents related to vehicles, etc. These things may come to pass. These things will come to pass. So this is how you have to judiciously judge between the significations of the planet. Okay. Specifically, this is the Saturn. Saturn is the cargo of misery, whichever planet Saturn is situated to in Rashi and Navamsha. That. Person is causing you misery. You are getting in a miserable situation because of that person. That is point one. That person is making your life difficult. That person is producing you misery. Another point is, as, as I said, Sun when powerful makes you more proud. With Saturn, because Saturn is the cargo for misery. When Saturn is powerful, one is less miserable. And the and when the Saturn is weak, one is more miserable. Now you should understand it have nothing to do with achievements in life. Someone with a debilitated Saturn can have a lot of achievements, but can be quite miserable. Whereas someone with exalted Saturn may have a very little of things with him, but is not at all in a miserable condition. So this is personal enjoyment, personal satisfaction, personal contentment that Saturn is dealing with. and this particular bumper technique related to karkas that i have revealed in the second half of this video should specifically be taken note of and should always be used that's all for this particular video we will continue namaskar